four-time stroke survivor. Um, I'm 37 years old. I had my first stroke at 35. I was diagnosed uh, at 36 with a hole in my heart and with protein S deficiency, which causes clots to go through that hole and causes me to have strokes. The person I was named after died of heart disease before the age of 50. Uh, both grandparents died of heart disease. My father had a stroke. Uh, his mother had a stroke. My brother had a cardiac cath at the age of 12. And about two years ago, after exercising, I found myself uh, in the same position on a cardiac cath table in my own hospital, having uh, suffered some, uh, some, some pain and some uh, shortness of breath and uh, profuse sweating, knowing all the signs. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm thankful that I cut it early. I'm thankful that I'm a member of the family that's lived past the age of 50 as a male. And uh, I'm hoping that what we're doing is, uh, you know, I guess, some degree selfish because I'm saving my own life, but hopefully we're saving the lives of, of people throughout the uh, country and throughout the world through the great research that uh, folks are doing uh, as a result of the funding from NIH, CDC, and the American Heart Association. Well, when I was eight years old, I experienced episodes of passing out. Okay. So my mom took me to the doctor and she, you know, tried to figure this out. And they kept saying, oh, you're just a kid playing too hard, slow it down. And when actually when I was 14, I was answering the telephone and I passed out and had a seizure on the floor. My mom knew that, you know, something's seriously wrong, we got to figure this out. And then I was 14 at the time and they diagnosed me with long QT syndrome, which is a problem of the heart's electrical rhythm. And then since long QT is hereditary, my dad and my sister also have it and they also have defibrillators. And here's the scar of mine. Um, but I mean, it's been six years since I've had it and I'm, you know, fairly healthy, just got to cut back on the strenuous activity, but you know, I'm here lobbying because this is something I really care about. We gotta, you know, increase the prevention because 20 years ago my uh, grandpa passed away at 53 because of long QT and he didn't know he had it, so it's definitely something I'm fighting for. <laughs> well, I have a real personal story when it comes to stroke and heart disease. My grandfather, who I met was a little boy, he had a stroke, died of a stroke. My mother, my favorite uncle, who was a pastor, and then my father, my sister, and my brother have died of heart disease. I'm a pharmacist, so you know I see patients all day long with heart disease and stroke. I'm a pastor of a church, same thing. And it's just wherever you turn, and most people feel they're alone, but it touches everybody. And that's why I'm involved, because when I tell my story, other people open up and tell their story. When my husband passed away, he left me with three boys, six, two and three months old. So heart disease really affected us in a, it's almost an unspeakable, unspeakable way. And also I, as a mother, needed to be aware that my own children have high blood pressure, pressure and need to worry about their weight and their health concerns. So as a family, we made significant lifestyle changes so that we can be uh, you know, better fit and able to conquer heart disease. I was diagnosed with atrial septic defect. It's a congenital heart defect. I it could have been caught early on, but because of screening, I wasn't able to be caught. So I was at a point where I was going to have a severe heart attack. And I finally, I had an angel watching me, so I got saved. And I had been better with open heart surgery. And thanks to NIH funding Marshfield, Marshfield Clinic, I was able to have the surgery, and it all went well. So. I had I had to have open heart surgery because I have three holes in my heart. When I was 11 months old, I had I had open heart surgery. I almost lost my mother at 46 to heart disease, and the same summer I was diagnosed with a cardiovascular condition. So we have two survivors in the same family, and so it's very very important to me. And I've worked with them for a decade now, dedicated a decade of my life to service to the AHA. My story is I had a heart event where my heart stopped. Um, and since then I've been doing a lot of work for the American Heart Association because I don't want anyone else to have the same experience that I've had. Um, this time last year I was actually in uh, Stanford, Stanford uh, dying, waiting for a uh, heart for a transplant. I got a uh, virus in my heart, uh, viral myocarditis, which caused a uh, uh, cardiac myopathy, which caused my heart to swell about two and a half times its normal size. Um, they did everything they could, medicines and pacemaker, AICD, it just it wasn't going to take. Uh, I'm able to be here today to uh, advocate how strongly important this is and uh, the reasons why we fight on for this. Another couple days I'll be a one year anniversary, so that's, that's quite the achievement. I'm uh, here in Washington, D.C., basically I would say celebrating a second chance on life, which not too many of us ever get the opportunity to do. 
had my first heart attack at a whopping young age of 43 when I was training for a triathlon. It had been my second triathlon I was training for. And I was dumbfounded that I could have, I didn't believe that it was happening to me. And so I was only nine at the time, so it was kind of a real wake up call to me. Um, what I like to do is I like to play sports, but I can't actually play contact sports because I'm a heart patient. I've had four open heart surgeries. When I was born, I was born with a hole in my heart, and two of those four surgeries were for valve replacements. So I get really sick easily. Um, I um, have lots of hospital stays, and I'm just happy to be here today. Um, I've had three strokes, one when I was 17, one when I was 18, one when I was 19, and I'm 20 now, so fairly recent. And um, I was having the strokes because I have a hole in my heart. And um, once that got diagnosed, I got to have the hole in my heart fixed, and so now I haven't had any strokes since. And I'm actually at no more risk than anyone else to have strokes, which is really, really nice. And it was a really e easy procedure to have it done, too. And so I'm, I'm very thankful for all the past research that has happened because that helped me to live a better life and have a brighter future. I didn't really have any of the signs. I thought I was perfectly healthy. I had a great job. And one day, I came from a luncheon, walked into my husband's law office, and I started to feel funny. And then I collapsed. When I woke up, I was in the hospital. Little did I know that my place of residency for the next four months would be in a hospital and an inpatient stroke center. For me, it was an eye-opening awareness. I didn't know my cholesterol was high. I knew I had high blood pressure and I was over 50. But I didn't feel sick or I didn't look like what I thought the typical stroke victim looks like. Now what is that, I now ask myself. So for me, it was physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy. When I left that inpatient stroke center, I came home in a wheelchair. Doctors said it was little hope that I would ever walk again. But through people like the people here with us today, great advocates, people coming to me and making me believe that I would walk again. And today I'm talking and I'm walking, which is another reason that I participate in Heart Disease Stroke, You're the Cure. Telling our story, looking at the statistics and giving information and working with doctors and scientists that we can have clinical trials, that states will pass legislation, and that we will put more money into heart disease and stroke so we can have adequate, affordable, and accessible health care. That's why I do what I do.